This lecture corresponds to section 24.4, calculating the magnetic field due to a current. We have seen uh, that wires can produce a magnetic field. This magnetic field, however, goes, uh, gets weaker and weaker as uh, it, uh, we move away from the wire. This picture here represents a wire, the X, meaning that the current is going into the page. And uh, as, uh, as it moves away, when one moves away, the field that it produces gets uh, smaller and smaller. So as you can see, a large arrow here means a stronger field, a medium-sized field, and a very small field. And of course, uh, since um, the current is perpendicular to the screen, the field is going to be around it according to the right-hand rule, and it's going to be pointing down at this point, pointing left at this other point, pointing up at this point, and so on. In terms of uh, the magnitude, if we, we plot the field, the strength of the field as a function of the distance, it, we know that it goes like 1 over r. So it's going to be dropping like so. The, in order to calculate the magnetic field from the current and the distance, we need a constant proportionality because the current is in amps the distance in meters, and B is going to be in some sort of a units that uh, we're going to call Teslas. So we need to go from amps over meter to Teslas. And for that, it turns out that the constant of proportionality happens to be the permeability constant divided by, by 2 pi. The permeability constant is what we have seen before, and um, it is given by 1.26 times 10 to negative 6. And it's going to be given in Tesla's meter over amps. These meters over amps will ca uh, cancel the amps over meter here, and we'll end up with uh, Tesla as the unit of the magnetic field. This uh, table shows uh, the strength of the magnetic fields for different uh, cases. Like, for instance, if you have one of those normal wires that we use to, to power, say, a blender, uh, a, a computer, etc. It carries about a one amp of uh, current, and uh, the field strength, um, about 10 centimeters from the wire, is going to be two times 10 to the negative six teslas, and so on. Uh, if we go all the way to um, uh, a solenoid inside of a magnetic resonance instrument, then the field strength is going to be about one tesla. So you can see that it grows by about a million times. And um, the field uh, on the surface of the Earth is of the magnitude. It varies, of course, but it's uh, roughly of this magnitude. If you have two sources of fields, uh, the, the fields, the magnetic fields that they produce will add up vectorially. So, for instance, in this case, we have a, a wire uh, perpendicular to the screen with the current coming out of the page. So it, if you use your right hand, you can see that uh, it produces a magnetic field that circles around uh, counterclockwise. At the same time, we have a magnet with the north and south poles that produces a field that comes out from the north and circles around and goes into the south. So at a given point, the um, field is going to be the sum of the magnetic field of the magnet that points this way and the magnetic field of the wire that goes around like that and at this point points this way. So adding these two fields will give us a net field by, uh, equal to this other arrow. Uh, in case that we have a more complicated geometry, like for instance, a, a current that is forming a loop, then the field is going to be way more complicated. This is um, illustrated here. We have a loop that in which the current is going into the screen at this point and then circles around and comes out of the screen at this point. And of course, it circles around and goes back into the page again. Well, um, by taking a small segment up here, we can see that the, uh, here we have a current that is perpendicular to the screen pointing into the screen. If you use your right hand for that, you can see that it produces a field that circles around in a clock, counterclockwise direction. On the other hand, if we if you take a small element here of the current of the loop, we'll see that you can see that 
the current at this point is coming out of the screen. Um, actually, I made a mistake. It, it is going into the screen here. And using your right hand, you can see that it points in the clockwise direction. Here is um, coming out of the screen, and it is pointing in a counterclockwise direction. Now, the field here is, will vary in magnitude depending on where we are around the loop. So the only easy way to calculate is the field exactly at the center. At the center of the loop, the field is given by this. Look at the fact that it looks like uh, the field produced by a straight wire, but it doesn't have the pi here. So it is that's the only difference. If we, instead of having one single loop, we have uh, uh, n number of turns, like in this case, we have the loop and the current is going in and going around and coming out, then all we have to do is multiply the previous expression by n, and we're going to get the field at the center again, at the center. This is an interesting um, exercise. Turns out that uh, there are some um, animals, birds, fish, and turtles, that um, find their way uh, by feeling the magnetic field of the Earth. But the magnetic field has a peculiarity that um, is not exactly parallel to the surface. It's only parallel, exactly parallel to the surface at the equator. And uh, in the northern hemisphere, the field points down a little bit. It is pointing to the north, of course, to the geographic no north, but it is pointing down. And it is pointing down at 60 degrees below the hor uh, horizontal. So in this case, they, won, um, they, they were doing an experiment with green turtles. And th these guys uh, find their way by looking at, feeling the, um, the magnetic field that is pointing down. So the, what they are doing here is creating a field that is pointing up of the same magnitude just to see what uh, how the turtles would react. This is kind of a setup, and you have these wires around producing a, uh, with a current producing a field, and in this case, if you use your right hand, you can see that if we have uh, uh, the current coming out from here and going in here, you can see that uh, it produces a field that is pointing up well, the Earth's magnetic field is going to be pointing down at 60 uh, degrees below the horizontal, and it would have a vertical component e uh, equivalent to the magnetic field times the sine of 60. So this is the one that wants to be canceled by the field of the loop. So the question is, what is the current in the, needed in the coil as to produce this component that will cancel exactly this component. Well, again, repeating, uh, we have to calculate this. We, we know that this is 5 times 10 to the negative 5 Teslas, so we need to calculate the uh, vertical component of it, which is going to be the 5 times 10 to the negative 5 Teslas sine of 60. And then this is going to be the magnitude of this, and we're going to equate that to the expression that we have and solve for the current from there. Here it is. The vertical component of the Earth's magnetic field is going to be the 5 times 10 to the negative 5, or 50 times 10 to the negative 6, times the sine of 60. So that equals to this. The minus sign here um, indicates that the field is pointing down. Well, but we want this magnitude to be equal of the magnitude of the field of the coil. And the field of the coil is given by this, the number of turns, and we're going to take the number of turns as 1, and then uh, the, the current and the radius. So by solving for the current, we turn things around, and we get... Uh, that uh, the radius is going to be 72 centimeters, mu zero is this, and n oh, is, n is uh, the number of turns, is 60. I thought it was uh, 1. Okay, with that, uh, you calculate this and you get uh, 0 0.41 amps. Continuing, uh, there is um, something more complex than a single loop 
there is a sequence of loops. And this is a coil, basically. It is known as a solenoid, but as what you would know as a coil is the same wire going around. And you can see that uh, on a plane, you can see that um, it, it comes, the current comes out, circles around, and goes in. And then under the plane, it goes back here and comes out and, and continues that way. Again, the field is going to be complicated because uh, it is um, the field of a loop several times. So all those fields are going to add up. Something interesting is that the field inside approximates a constant value. And the field outside tends to be extremely weak. So on a perfect, uh, under perfect conditions, when this is long and when the radius is small compared to the length, then the field inside is uniform and the field outside is practically zero. Now, do we invent these gadgets only to give you difficult homework problems? No, this, these are actually invented or uh, used to uh, develop magnetic fields that can be used for switches. For instance, uh, every car has one solenoid that is used in the ignition. And um, also, a huge of those things uh, can produce a huge solenoid, can produce a very strong field that is uh, used in the magnetic resonance imaging machines. Again, this shows how the current would come in, would go around, and then would come out. Look at the fact that it comes out on the other end of the loop. It comes in on the near side of the, of the loop. You can use your right hand, take a small segment right here, and point in the direction, your thumb in the direction of the current, and you will see that the field produced is going to be coming out from the loop. Circular, cir circling around and then going in on this other end. You can do that with your right hand again. Something like this. This is a cross-sectional view, and we can see that the current is coming out here and is going in on this side. So it goes in here, comes out, goes to here, and then comes uh, out again. Uh, I mean, goes in again, comes out, and so on. And the field is going to be produced by... Uh, it would look like something like this. You can see that it's very uniform inside and very much weak, sparse out here. The field for such case for the inside is given by this expression. Look at the fact that it kind of looks like the previous uh, uh, formulas, except that here we have, instead of R, we have L. L being the number of uh, the, the length of the solenoid, and it has an N being the number of turns of the wire. The, the ratio n over l is basically the number of turns per length. And look at the fact that it does, doesn't have any dependence on how wide this, the diameter of this loop. It has nothing to do with that. So it's going to be the same value anywhere inside of this region. And this is an, an approximation for this region, the central region of the solenoid. If you, if you get close to the edges, it will become more sparse and will not be in the same direction as near the, the center. So sometimes you find problems in which the number of turns is given and the length is given, but sometimes they don't tell you the length or the number of, of turns, but rather they give you the number of turns per length, which is the, the density linear density of turns. So this is a, a check of uh, to understand the direction of uh, the field given a direction of the of the of the solenoid of the current and solenoid. Uh, the question is here is about the current. If the field is like this, would you have the current going in through here or in through this other end. Well, if you use your right hand, just take a segment here and use your right hand, curl the fingers around the, this segment, and you're going to see that um, it produces a field if, if the current is moving up 
it produces a field that is towards the left. If the current is moving down, it produces a current that is a field that it goes to the right. So the answer is enters on the right and comes out on the left, producing that field. Here we have a, a comparison between two solenoids. The solenoid 2 has twice the diameter, has twice the length, and has twice as many turns as this one. The question is, how does the field inside here and the field here compare? Are they, uh, one is larger than the other one, one by four, one is twice as big, etc. So the answer is that uh, they are the same, because if you remember, there is um, no dependence on the radius of the solenoid. So because of that, there is no change. Now, there is a dependence on N over L, but N over L here is the same as N over R here, because this is twice as length and twice the number of turns. So the two, the twos cancel and gives, you get the same ratio. This is an example and you want to use a solenoid of a length of about a meter and diameter of about a meter to uh, produce a field of about a uh, one tesla this is the field produced when the current is about 100 amps the question is how many turns of wire do you need well remember v equals mu zero and n i divided by l so from that uh, we have to solve for n and here it is. You solve for n and you use the numbers given. L is 1 meter, B is 1 tesla, mu zero is the constant given, and the current is 100 amps. So you get that it's about 8,000 turns. This is a summary of all the cases that we saw. This is for the case of a, a straight wire as a function of the distance. It produces a field given by this. And uh, the, if you use your right hand pointing your thumb in the direction of the current, you will see that the curl fing fingers will give you the direction of the field. Remember that mu zero is the permittivity constant, it's down even here. For a loop, it can be a, a single loop or it can be a loop with many, many turns. And this is different from a solenoid. A solenoid is a uh, very much um, is wider and this one is very concentrated and in this case the field is uh, very complex the magnetic field but uh, we can calculate it uh, easily only for the center right here for the center of the uh, of the of the loop it is given by this very much like the previous one except for the pi for a solenoid which is a collection of loops. Um, the field inside is given by this. Look at the, the fact that it does not depend on the radius of the circle of those loops. And it is uniform and uh, inside. This is another example. We have um, a wire that is carrying three amps of current and then circles around, goes around, and then comes out here. The question is, what is the field of the center? Well, this problem is very complex, but it can be simplified by taking, by dividing the two sources as a single wire is continuing a straight in a loop. So we're gonna have two fields, one produced by a single wire at a distance R, and the other one produced by a loop at the center. So it's just a matter of, um, of adding the two fields, the the one for the straight wire is going to be mu zero i divided by two pi r, and the one for the loop is going to be mu zero i divided by twice uh, r. Plug in the numbers, you get these two fields. Now you have to use your right hand on both cases. For the straight wire, pointing your thumb in this direction so towards the right, and curling the fingers, you can see that the field comes out from here circles around and goes in at the point P. Now for the loop, you take a, a segment, take this segment here, think of it as a straight wire pointing up, 
use your uh, right hand rule, you, your right hand pointing the thumb up, you in curling the fingers, you can see that the fingers will get into the loop in this region and will come out of the loop here, out of the plane here. So uh, both fields are going to have the same direction and we need to add them. So it's going to be this plus that gives you 6.2 times 10 to 85 Teslas into the page. This is um, another problem similar to the one that we use for the turtles. Um, we want to create a field that is 10 times as large as the magnetic field of the Earth. And um, we want to do it using a loop of uh, 25 centimeters in diameter and with 20 turns. And the question is, what is the current needed to provide a field that is 10 times larger than the magnetic field of the Earth? Well, it's just a matter of solving for the current out of this. We know that the field is going to be 20 times, I mean, 10 times the field of the Earth. So it's going to be 500 micro Teslas. And um, N is uh, 20, the current is what we want, and the uh, uh, radius of the loop is going to be 25, uh, uh, half of 25 centimeters. So we put it here and we get it. And I'm afraid that I made a mistake because uh, the cardboard forms a 25 centimeters in diameter, and we need the radius, so it should be this divided by two. But okay, the procedure is the same, it's just the answer is going to be two and a half. And that's the end of um, section four. This is the homework I'm assigning three, six problems. And that's it for section 24, 24.4.